Seven Days to Die Alpha 20 brought a lot of changes, but not all of them were given a lot of coverage in the patch notes, or in videos going over the changes. As it turns out, there are a lot of influential changes that were given one or two lines in the patch notes, and in today's video I'll be going over my top seven lesser known but influential changes in Alpha 20. This list isn't in any particular order, but I do think number one is definitely my personal favourite change. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like, but with that out of the way, let's jump in. Number seven is the airdrop buff. I couldn't actually find this change anywhere in the patch notes, but it's fairly obvious when you actually get one that they have been buffed significantly. Now, when you open a supply drop, you will be guaranteed some kind of supply bundle. If you haven't played with these yet, basically there are a bunch of supply bundles which you can get from airdrops and as tier completion rewards from traders. You open them in your inventory and you get some stuff. It's fairly random which drop you'll get and what you'll get in the bundle varies depending on what one you have. And there's way too many to list off without making this video 10 minutes longer, but the potential loot of airdrops is definitely worth it in my opinion now. As an example, here's what I got from 10 airdrops at the start of the game, so you can judge if you think any of this stuff is worth it early on. But the airdrop does scale with the new loot stage mechanic, so if we head over to the wasteland and max our level, we can see what you get on the upper end of these drops in the late game. Here's what I got from 10 max level wasteland loot stage airdrops, and keep in mind that you can improve this even further with Lucky Looter eye candy and lucky goggles. And of course, this will vary for you because it's essentially random. If nothing else, you can sell some of this stuff for some decent money. While I'm on the topic of supply bundles and money though, number six all the trader changes. There was a lot of them. Traders experienced a big rebalance in Alpha 20. Now I don't want to praise nerfs too much, but let's start with the nerfs that brought the traders down a notch. First of all, traders no longer sell level 1 ranged weapons, so straight off the bat, getting a level 1 AK for 400 dukes in the first 9 minutes of the game is no longer possible, which is good for game balance, stopping Insane Nightmare from becoming a bit of a joke because now you can't spawn in and get a level 1 pump action shotgun by selling a couple of schematics anymore. On top of that, every Everything at the traders has been doubled in price. This means that guns are now very expensive at the trader. This is good again for game balance, reducing the likelihood of getting amazing guns on day one. It also makes an investment into intellect less powerful, but also more necessary for trading. Which means intellect is now much more of a unique playstyle because buying your way to success without intellect just isn't really worth it anymore, and if you played Alpha 19, you'll know the meta was most definitely some variation of rush better barter, get a good gun, win. Or on harder difficulties, it was more like rush combat perks, rush better barter, get good gun win. That said, they now sell thrown explosives like contact grenades and pipe bombs, but I do think that's fair. They're reasonably expensive and single use, which is a much better way of allowing the players to buy firepower, isn't just a late game gun because you actually have to choose when to use throwables, realistically saving them for Horde Night. Whereas guns obviously don't need to be saved because ammo was their only limiting factor and ammo was not scarce in Alpha 19. Trading was given a real vibe check in Alpha 20, which is very welcome, allowing the other attribute trees some room to breathe, but it also made questing stronger, which in turn made Daring Adventurer even stronger, which was already a top 5 perk. Speaking of quests, those were changed quite a bit as well. Traders will now unlock the next tier of quests after completing 7 of a given tier rather than 10, which I think is a good change for pacing if nothing else. Now when you complete a tier of jobs, you also get a choice of rewards, and these completion rewards are no joke. Upon the completion of tier 1, you get a guaranteed bicycle, and considering that I can get tier one done by noon of day two, that is not an insignificant buff to quests. But you can also get forges, tools, and those bundles I mentioned earlier. And at later tiers, you can get even better stuff, like bundles with 4x4 parts. Also, general quest rewards seem to have been buffed. You can get mid-level tier 2 firearms, like 44 magnums and pump action shotguns from tier 2 jobs now. Tier 4s and tier 5s will now give much better gear than actually looting those POIs would. So, questing was buffed, but trading was nerfed. Intellect is still very strong, but it has been taken down a notch, which I like. From some big meta-changing reworks to a very simple but completely underappreciated change. Number 5, the steroids buff. Yep, they buff steroids and you probably didn't even notice, did you? It's pretty significant as well. Steroids now have an additional use beyond carry capacity and run speed. Now, if you break or sprain a limb, you can use steroids to prevent the injury from getting worse and from damaging you. If you didn't know, when you break or sprain your leg, every time you jump or sprint, you'll take damage and the injury timer will be extended. Steroids can now be used to temporarily mute this effect, which is great because even after you have a vehicle in pocket mods, steroids still have a niche medical purpose 
this right into the end game. Not that I think anyone was looking at steroids and thought, wow, these are so helpful, but they just don't have a purpose in the end game. I think it's more to make sprains and breaks less of a pain in the ass for the player base. This is a welcome change and a big quality of life improvement, and it makes an item a more useful. What's not to love? Presumably the debilitating effect steroid abuse has on the human body in the long term. Number four, the stun baton fixes. Yep, the stun baton was literally broken, which explains why even by tier 2 standards, it was pretty bad in Alpha 19. And that was because its perk wasn't working correctly. The stun of the stun baton now correctly scales with the perk, meaning you can keep enemies stunned for a lot longer. Now, does this fix all the problems with the stun baton? No. It still needs a mod and a piece of candy and several skill books to be actually worth using, but taking the perk isn't a complete waste of your time anymore because it actually does what it says. Combined with the new pipe baton, this fix means that a baton's build on lower difficulties is not a waste of time. Still not a good option for insane or survivalist because the base damage and stun damage just aren't enough compared to other weapons that rely less on having mods, candy and skill books and don't have to deal with the stun charge mechanic. This is also not helped by the fact that there is no tier 3 baton in the game yet to make batons worthwhile in the late game. But if you already use stun batons, they just got a lot stronger. And if you play on a lower difficulty and want to try them, now would be a good time to give them a shot because now they're actually working as they're intended. If you're on higher difficulties, well, I have something you can try later in the video, so stay tuned. Number 3, Zombie Health Changes. Let me just make one thing clear here because a lot of people have misinterpreted the patch notes when it said enemies have random base hit points. This is simply untrue. They have variable base hit points. Zombies all have a base health value, for example on non-feral male zombies that base HP is 150, but now this can be up to 20% lower or up to 15% higher, this is according to entityclasses.xml. You won't find an Arlene with 600 health and you won't find a demo with 75 health. It is variable not random, meaning there's more variety in enemy healths, making the game a little bit less predictable and repetitive. Honestly, I'm not that excited about this change, I just really wanted people to know that no, zombie health is not random, and you can still mathematically work out shots to kill by simply using the upper limit of a zombie's health. It's a pretty cool change that some people have misunderstood, so I thought I'd clear that up here. On to number two. Number two. Special ammo changes. Remember hollow point ammo? Hollow point ammo used to increase target armor, meaning it was less effective on armored targets. Well, first of all, hollow point ammo doesn't even exist anymore. It's been replaced with high power. Now, instead of doing 30% more damage, it does about 10% more damage, but with the added bonus of no longer increasing target armor, meaning you can effectively use it against all enemy types. It's still not actually worth using in my opinion because you're using an extra bullet tip for 10% more damage where you could just make two bullets and have 100% more damage, but at least HP ammo isn't a complete waste of time anymore if you happen to find or buy some. However, AP ammo has been massively reworked. Armor piercing ammo now actively does 20% more damage than regular ammo, which is better than the previous version which didn't give any extra damage. Now meaning that using AP ammo against unarmored targets isn't a waste because you're still doing more damage against everything. They also now penetrate 50% of armor across the board compared to the variable value in Alpha 19 that went from 30% to 45% armor penetration. This is a minor buff across the board for all AP ammo types. My favourite change though has to be that armor piercing ammo no longer causes extra degradation to your guns, meaning your M60 won't break before firing a full magazine anymore, and armor piercing ammo still penetrates one target meaning you can hit two enemies with one bullet. So now armor piercing ammo is completely just good across the board in all cases. It costs an extra bullet tip and 50% more gunpowder to craft, but dealing 20% more damage hitting two enemies and penetrating 50% of armor at no degradation cost is pretty worthwhile in my opinion as it's practically doing double damage on horde knights if you're hitting two zombies with each shot. It may be a bit overkill for POIs though, but then again guns in general are a bit unnecessary for most POIs. On top of all of that, the penetrator perk now works differently than before. Now instead of a flat 35% extra armor penetration with guns and bows, you get 20% extra armor penetration with guns and bows, and 50% extra armor penetration with anything that already has target armor reduction, meaning that you can penetrate all armor with the penetrator perk and armor piercing ammo, or steel bolts and arrows, which is a pretty significant buff to both the penetrator perk and armor piercing ammo. Oh, and they also made it so that shotguns no longer have a penalty against armor, because shotguns needed a buff. 
And finally, number one is the archery buff. I mean, if you've been on my channel for the last couple of weeks, you knew this was going to be here. It was my first Alpha 20 video. Bows have been buffed significantly. So much so that on insane difficulty, two ranks of hidden strike will allow you to one hit kill most basic zombies with a sneak attack headshot from the starter bow. All the bows and crossbows have been buffed in damage and accuracy significantly. There is apparently an issue with hit registration, but all I can say from... Mm -hmm too much time playing with the bows is that it seems to only be an issue of moving enemies. And because I only use my bow for stealth attacks on static zombies, I have not once experienced this hit reg issue. But it is an issue you should consider if you want to try bows, and if you're watching in the future it has probably been patched. I like the new buff because it really, really helps agility shine a lot more in the early game on those harder difficulties, where previously it was almost necessary to go into strength on insane difficulty just to keep up. A more viable early game Play sales is always a good thing. If you want even more detail on just how much better the bows have been made in Alpha 20, I have a video where I go in depth on it popping up now. If you want to watch that, go ahead, but if not, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and of course, consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you to all my channel members who make these videos possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.